because you're the only person that I've ever met that has a deep knowledge of Steiner and Raw simultaneously, usually there's somebody that's very skilled on Raw but doesn't know much about Steiner or a lot of Steiner people that I've met that are quite evolved in Steiner's teachings don't really know much of anything about Raw or they might have heard of Raw but they don't really know much of what the teachings are. Yeah. So to have you be able to... Um, give us this juxtaposition of these two viewpoints where there's harmony and differences is, is quite a blessing, which is why I was so excited to talk to you on the podcast about this. So I thought we'd start with the big question first. What is God from Ra's perspective and what mm. is God from Steiner's <clears throat> perspective? Mm. Yeah. Or well, is there even a God? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, yeah, it's a, that's, I guess that's about as deep as it gets. <laughs> uh, why not start? Why not start with the, the, the big hitter? Let's go, you know, we're, while we're fresh, let's right. get, get the shovels out and start digging. Yeah. Pitch me a gymnastic ball to hit with a bat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, why not? I have both for you. <laughs> All right. Um, I think for, for Ra, um, the the name that he would probably use for for God would be one infinite creator yeah. with, and you just mentioned infinity yeah. that, that there, there in, in a way there isn't a beginning and there isn't an end. Right. Uh, and for some people that's an unsatisfactory answer. And I understand that. Um, for me, it's a, it's a delightful answer. Me too. Um, either, you know, the problem with a God that has a beginning and an end is you always have to ask, well, what created that? Yeah, you know, I think the a uh, God, you know, in, in my definition, God is that for which there is no other. In other words, if you can get to the point where there's still something that could possibly create God, you haven't found God. You've just got an idea or a construct or yeah, some you know illusion. And uh, so when when I use the definition of God is that for which there is no other, it means there is there is nowhere to go. You've hit the bottom. That, that, that's source yeah that's where the where the water of life is coming from and everything else is just some sort of an expression of that yeah it's downstream so the you know i i often and i wrote about this in my spirit excuse me my spirit gym series and I, I i said you know if you understand even in the bible where it describes god as omniscient omnipotent um omnipresent those words omni mean all which is absolute which is even beyond infinite, because you can have multiple infinities at one time. You can have infinite knowledge, but you may not have infinite strength. Yeah. You can have an infinite number of points on the head of a pin, but you can also have infinite number of points in a line. Um, you know, if you look into Cantor's math on infinity, he shows you all sorts of ways that infinity can be worked with. Uh, but the point I'm making is when you look at omni words in the bible as one reference mm -hmm. those are absolute words they're 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 not even infinite they're omni yeah yeah and so because most people don't really understand what those words actually mean like they they just kind of rattle them off like they use the word god and not really realize what they're saying right that the concept of an infinite god is very hard for people to really wrap their human mind around mm -hmm. because if God is that for which no, there is no other, it means God has infinite power, infinite amounts of information, infinite wisdom, infinite information, and infinite processing speed. So if you think of what has infinite creativity, infinite power, infinite wisdom, infinite knowledge, infinite, no, infinite information, infinite processing speed, and say, okay, what could you create with that? I'm looking at it. Well, so am I. Yeah. And so is the whole universe. But the problem is, is we're just looking at the physical aspects of it, right? And and this is, uh, you know, why concepts like um, multiverse, omniverse, um, many worlds interpretation, Everett's many, many worlds interpretation, where there's something like 10 to the 500 possibilities with every choice that we make all can be being actuated at once. Yeah. I mean, I've studied 37 theories of everything and interestingly, none of them agree with each other. Mm -hmm. So 
you see from my perspective that God can actually be doing all of that at the same time. Yeah. And you can be a human and say, oh, that's not possible. That's not true. But not realize, oh, yes, it is possible. And that everything's possible. Right. And, you know, Aubrey Hepburn has a beautiful quote, which from an actress, you know, is a hot looking babe. It's quite deep, but it's very simple. She says, nothing is impossible. The word itself says, I'm possible. And so if you think of God as infinite, then you could say nothing is impossible. And what does it say in the Bible? I am that I am. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I am that I am can also be I am infinite and that I am. And that means everything's possible. Yeah. So I think it, it's a, I think it's a time for human beings to... Um, release the shackles of preconceived ideas of God and, and spend some time doing some deep dreaming. And I think this is, yeah. you know, what vision quests are for. I think that's what meditation is for. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, my experience as a remote viewer is that <laughs> there's a lot more going on here than the conscious mind can wrap its head around, you uh -huh. know? And then um, I think also that um, there's... Uh, the skillful use of plant medicines because I've had profound, deep God experiences. I've had them through Tai Chi. I've had them through meditation, but I've also had many through plant medicine experiences, you, you know, very significant journeys, very deep journeys where it, it literally ultra, utter, utterly blows your mind. Yeah. I mean, you're completely mind blown. And mm. so when you're free of, the limitation of mind, but you're still there enough to perceive, it's as though you go into a parallel process of perception yourself, which you can't really do with a mind because the yeah. mind's always cutting everything. Yeah. So the alchemist called the mind the logos cutter, logo meaning logos meaning divine plan. Mm. So we have to cut it into pieces so we can talk about it. Right. 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 But when you go deep enough to literally blow your mind, yet you remain conscious then you can find yourself in many dimensions, experiencing many realities, even at once. I've yeah. experienced myself on multiple planes all at the same time going, how is this possible? Yeah. I've even, I, I, I've even had experiences where I'm, I have a family and children in another dimension, in another body, mm. living a total lifetime while I'm also simultaneously alive here. Now, these are things that most people don't have a slot for in their mail room. You know? <laughs> right, right. And, you know, a lot of people would say people like me are crazy, but I'd say, look, you know, um, perception is as real as it gets, right? If you're having an experience, you're having an experience. Mm -hmm. And I've had many, many experiences that were more real than this experience in my body right here, breathing and talking to you. Right. And I've come back into this experience and it felt like this was the sleepy, dreamy experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I could go off on a, a thousand of these experiences because they're so profound and I've found them to be so enriching that uh, it was important for me to continue to do my own personal research so that I don't just believe shit that people say right? and, and trust that that's the truth because so far that hasn't worked out well for anybody in the world. No. Look, doesn't. here we are. Yeah. We're a, we're a world full of believers. <laughs> yeah. And how's that worked and, out? And the beliefs are a little, a little challenging right now. And most of those <laughs> beliefs are programmed by people that want to control you. Yeah. For their own benefits. So, so if you're, if I hear you right, Ra would say that there's one infinite creator, mm -hmm. and that is the source of everything. Is that correct in Ra's perspective? That's certainly, he's the source of everything, and, and he would, um, certainly the the being that is Ra, the the 6.5 billion or, or million uh, mind-body complexes, which he calls basically. Which we would call a soul. Which we would call a soul. Mm -hmm. uh, loved, trusted, and understood one another to where, spoken language is no longer necessary and they they would be these individuals you're talking about that can be in multiverses that can experience these different situations and in real time communicate that experience to the rest of the individuals in what may be called a monad or a social memory complex mm -hmm. uh, so that's 
that's the creator knowing the creator. And mm -hmm. what does that look like at, at our level? At our level, that means when I said, when I, I wasn't being flip, when I said you, that we actually are able to look at the other and see the creator Yeah. All at all times. That yes. we can look in the mirror and we can see the creator. Yeah. And that we can then become the creator mm -hmm. at whatever level. It doesn't mean all of a sudden we're creating universes. We're I, I don't know anybody who's close to the level of creating universes. No, we, we have to learn. Yeah. I mean, first we need to start participating active imaginationally with archetype beings mm -hmm. who are constantly creating and recreating, you know, in this kind of morphic resonance field, mm -hmm. beings and things and even ideas. Ra would call... Uh, thoughts, even part of what things are, he calls mm -hmm. thoughts forms, mm -hmm. because it's the reflection of what he would call the original thought. Mm -hmm. And what he asks us to think about is, have you had one original thought today? Have you had a thought that really is aligned with the creator? Or as you just said, are we looking at beliefs? Are we downstream parroting what it is rather than having our own experience and generating, having a, a self-generated experience of true thinking? I've had several original thoughts today. Yeah? I can prove it to you. I had to figure out how to put 14 rocks together, <laughs> each of which has its own unique shape, form, and personality and presence. Yeah. And I had to dialogue with them about how they wanted to engage these relationships. Mm -hmm. And none of those 14 rocks have ever held hands in my <laughs> presence before. <laughs> and if I didn't listen to them, I might not be here having this conversation <laughs> with you. And you were there watching it. So you know exactly what I mean. That's right. That's right. But I mean that. Like, yes. Like that's, that's an original thought. Mm -hmm. I'm not listening to anybody else's ideas. There's no handbook on how to do this. Yeah. This is not Lego blocks or building blocks. This is you know, novel experiences. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons I do that kind of, that's why I paint, for example. I empty myself and just let soul work through me and paint something completely and utterly original that comes from nowhere. It's not a copy of anything. Right. I often don't even know what I'm painting until I stand back and go, holy shit, how'd that happen? Yeah. And I think that's a, a, a really important point uh, because most people's thinking is really just... Um, a form of artificial intelligence. It's just programs networking with programs mm -hmm. that are no different than a laptop computer versus um, what I would call natural intelligence or uh, the intelligence of the soul, which would mean to do what we were just talking about, do original things. I think people have lost touch with originality and authenticity yeah. And spontaneity, which is all uh, a mode of saying creativity. Yeah, and I think that's where Steiner would go with the, with the question of what is God. He, he certainly would place God, he, he's a, he comes out of a mode of uh, that the important thing for the human being is to be able to come from 12 different viewpoints in order to be whole and balanced. And Ra has a very... Um, uh, biased perception toward the, necess the necessity for being balanced as well. Uh, they just look they look different. But but Steiner's is a is a twelve fold picture that is constellational. Mm -hmm. uh, in each individual, say in a particular meeting room, it can be uh, essential or at least very helpful if at least one of them is carrying strongly a stream from one of those. And they co they run all the way from spiritualist to idealist to materialist to realist and, and all points in between. And each one of them holds an experience of something that that is they're passionate about. Mm -hmm. And they have a real sense that this is necessary to bring to the world. Mm -hmm. And to have any decision being made, to have all 12 of those viewpoints, uh, is is the ideal in Steiner's perception to, to have a decision have the most carrying capacity, mm -hmm. the most resolve, yeah. resolve being the seventh level of will in Steiner's sort of uh, uh, picture of things. And so artistic work is a strong way to get there because you become co-creator, mm -hmm. uh, unless you're copying somebody else's right. work. Yeah. And his picture in particular uh, of individuals who compose music is those are the individuals who are working directly with archetypal beings, with, harmo with the harmony of the spheres, which is not something that we hear in the normal kind of hearing. It's an inner sort of hearing. And you and I just talked about this earlier, your progression of being able to talk to your soul. Mm -hmm. It took 
a yes and no mm. with a feeling of up or down. Mm -hmm. So there was a somatic resonance as a, yeah. as a st simple first step. Mm -hmm. And then you had the step of, of sort of fleeting images or still images coming, mm -hmm. and then more of a montage, mm -hmm. almost like a movie, mm -hmm. and then actually being able to, to hear mm -hmm. and then to speak and communicate. So this is the same, what you described to me is your experience, is the same progression that Steiner takes us through. Yeah, that's interesting because I didn't do it with any guidance from any I didn't have the sense that you did source it was just uh, uh, like a plant grows and matures mm -hmm. uh, as I got to the point where I realized there was just too many things I couldn't get clarity on because there wasn't a way to answer them with a yes or a no mm -hmm. I had to start getting stiller inside yeah and not I couldn't just rely on a, a yes, no, like do this, do that kind of mommy, daddy kind of coaching. I had to, fortunately, I'm quite a, a visual person and, and all my Tai Chi opened up my clairvoyance very, very strongly. So um, I can, I have inner seeing. So my soul took advantage of that and began to, and it started a long time ago when I was working with patients that were really complicated. And so mm -hmm. I would just ask my soul to connect me to their soul because I don't know what to do. This person's got so many things wrong. I could I could go in almost any direction and, mm. and probably help them. But I was really looking for what is the, you know, what is the um, common denominator that if I take this one domino out, the house of cards will fall down and their health will accelerate. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so I would go into meditation while I was working on them off and I would have them face down. I would just touch their body to connect strongly to their field. Mm. I would ask my soul to connect me to their soul. And I would say, what is it? You know, obviously I have a soul contract with you. Here I am. What would, what would you like me to do? Yeah. And I would start getting images maybe oftentimes of things like child sexual abuse or child trauma or uh, any number of things that have happened in their life because their soul would be sh showing me where the actual etiology of the crisis started from Yeah, and then guide me like that and also tell me what questions to ask them to help them become conscious because oftentimes they're not even conscious of yeah. where their cancer is coming from or where their digestive troubles are coming from or their, you know, their, their chronic throat pain or whatever it might be. Yeah. And so then um, through a variety of other practices and also encountering a lot of people, a lot of people, uh, deceased family members would, would show up when I was doing healing work with people and want to give me messages. And so I had to start really emptying myself and listening to them with almost like a shamanic listening, a second listening, not not my physical ears, but but um, clear audience. And so then they would start talking to me. So I learned how to really go even more calm in my listening space so that I could hear these things. Because sometimes when you're talking to people on the other side, it's almost like they're talking to you from the moon. It's quite strange but then that even evolved to where I would be able to just pick up information from them through telepathy yeah they would just look at me in the eyes and 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 it, and it would come to me sometimes I would see like streams of light coming at me and all of a sudden the information would be in my mind and then I would say oh did you just tell me this and so as that was happening I was also simultaneously using that with my soul and so as as all this grew over the span of you know pro probably over 15 years progressively to get to where i've reached to now um that was just the natural unfolding of it 